not going to say <laughs> it. 42, 267 laps completed Chicagoland. Our first caution of the night. David Strimmy popped the wall. Tough break for the driver out of South Bend, Indiana, not too far from home. And you see it top of your screen. Strimmy already riding the rim as he headed into the corner. He was the last car on the lead lap. Bobby Labonte got the free pass under this caution. And you see Martin Truex Jr. lining up in the outside lane. Good pit work by his team. Really good, but you see, he, he basically shaved a second off of Jimmy Johnson on the total time on pit road. One second is three spots, but hey, Matt, uh, somebody who was a big loser on that pit stop was the 14 car. What happened down there to Tony? Absolutely. When you look at the time, you can definitely see loss of spots. What happened was Mike Castro, the jack man, when they ran around to the right side of the car, he slid the jack under to hit the jack post. The problem is the seam between the asphalt and the concrete hooked the wheels and the wheels got stuck and he had to give it like three pushes to get the jack under the car to jack it up. That's what cost them the time and those positions on pit road. You see what a, a couple of seconds make a difference either way on pit lane. Marcos Ambrose, another driver who had to pay a penalty under this caution when he came down pit road. Lug nuts missing, he had to come back in. He will restart 33rd up front. Johnson and Truex, we get the restart as we put lap 43 on the board. This will be interesting to see how this plays out because you had the, had the 48 running right on the bottom or the middle to the bottom and Truex running all the way at the top of the racetrack uh, for that first leg of, a, of that long run. Nice battle here for four. David Rudiman who's been strong early inside of Greg Biffle. And McMurray racy on the restart here, Wally. Yeah, Jamie's right down on the bottom, right on the bumper of Jimmy Johnson. Doesn't quite have enough momentum to get beside him. And, and the 55 car, be, see what, he really came on strong after about 10 or 15 laps. There you see Trex riding third. And now on board with McMurray. And I'm out three wide. Montoya, Edwards, and Gordon for position. I think Jeff thought a little bit better of that driving off down into turn one uh, with that crowd making it three wide right there. But you see AJ right in there, Amendinger right behind him. Uh, gets around Jeff on the outside where Jeff was hung on the bottom, on the very, very bottom. 46 laps in tonight. Still plenty of time to get your picks in. For the TNT Million Dollar Fan Challenge, you pick the top 10 finishers in tonight's race in the correct order. You can win up to a million dollars. All you need to do is go to NASCAR.com slash TNT Million. Well, this is really good from seventh on back. Montoya, Almendinger, and Gordon. And there's that RCR bunch waiting in the weeds. Burton and Boyer. Gordon able to get the position. Jeff's car really, he, he drove on down in the corner and the thing rotated in the middle and he drove under the 43 and the, and the 42 at the same time, which is a pretty, pretty strong right there. So uh, whatever adjustment they made appears to have helped. Marty? Yeah, Jeff Gordon, very happy with the race car, the way it turned on the front end. The back end, though, was way too loose for him. So Steve Letarte said, you know what? Let's take a big swing in it. Two rounds down on that track bar. And, and KP and Wally, this is the time of, race, of the race to do something like that, isn't it? Take a big swing at it, just see if it works, and maybe you can do that later in the race as well. It appears to have helped his entrance. Yes. I yep. mean, he is getting in the corner, especially getting into turn three, which is a, a fairly difficult corner to get into. He could drive it down in there, hook it on the bottom. It seems to rotate good through the center. He was a little loose while Marty was talking there. I know he said maybe my car was a little loose. He was a little loose. He walked it up off turn two over here on the previous lap. Jeff Burton able to drive inside of A.J. Allmendinger, get the eighth position. You're riding with Burton here. That's Almondinger behind him and the bright yellow car going to the inside of the 43, Clint Boyer. If you're a Kevin Harvick fan and wondering where the third RCR team car is running right now, Harvick is 26th after starting back outside the top 25 at the beginning of the day. And Tony Stewart's car must be pretty good. He restarted 17th and already knocking on the door of the top 10. 
Yeah, and, and he's still on the bottom of the racetrack. But you see these guys that run the high side. You see AJ up here on the high side. You see Tony tucks in under right here in the middle of the racetrack. The, th the 33 gets a good roll through the middle, but this momentum on the high side carries him down the straightaway. Look at Stewart getting aggressive in the middle. Yeah, well, he knows he's got good tires right here, and these guys are holding him up a little bit. Because, I mean, when they drop the green flag, those first eight or ten laps, right, you know, eight or nine laps of the race, he made some time. And you see, just like Jeff Gordon's car, he can drive into the middle. Tony lets the thing slide up, takes the position away. Even though A.J. will be able to close back in on him because of that momentum, Tony's got the position. But you kind of expect it from the 14 because he was such a good car to yes. begin with. They had a little hiccup in the, in the, in the pits but the 14 car is strong. So you kind of expect him to, to get back up there. It's just when he gets a little bit closer, when he gets about to 6-7, it's going to get a little bit tougher for yeah. him. It gets a lot tougher. It's, the closer you get to the sharp end of the stick, the harder it gets to right. pass each other. And you saw right there, the 99 car, as, as Jeff rode, drove up on him, stuck his hand out the window and gave Jeff the position getting into turn three. These guys, you know, the, the funny thing about racing like this, especially this time in the race, you know, 50-some-odd laps into the race is if you end up racing a guy side by side for three or four laps, you lose a lot of time. And, Je and Jeff, and you look at these guys, they're smart enough to know, I don't want to lose time to the leader or those guys behind me catch up. Teammates racing for third. That's Truex in the Napa 56. Right behind him in the Tums double zero would be David Rudeman. These two cars have been very strong since the beginning. Rudeman started seventh and has stayed inside the top ten, and they got to be happy with the way they're running tonight, Phil. They are, Adam. He actually worked his way up to the fourth position before the caution flag came out. He's reported to his crew chief, Rodney Childers, that the car is really, really tight now, way tighter than it was before, and they adjusted air out of the right front tire to try to free the car up a little bit. Way, way tighter right now for David Rudeman. But, you know, Rudiman is really, he was fourth on that first run. He's fourth right now. He's really kind of maintained or stayed right there with Truex. And I thought Truex, Truex is running in the middle of the racetrack now to the bottom where that first run Truex was up in the white stuff. Uh, so whatever adjustment they've made, he's had to move to a different place on the racetrack to make his car work. And here's going to be the key. As this night continues and the sun continues to go down, how many of these guys that are inside the top ten right now is you see the sun peeking over the wall in turns three and four. How many of these drivers inside the top ten are going to be able to stay there? Because you've got to stay in front of the track. Yeah, this is where the communication between the driver and the crew chief and the team is going to be so important. And listening to the crew chief say, you know, the, the driver's got to say, I'm loose here, I'm tight here, whatever. You see these guys start down the back stretch. And I know this doesn't sound 52. like a lot. But when you turn in here at 170 or 80 miles an hour, boom, and there's the sun right in you. You don't see anything for 100 yards or so in there. It's like somebody being in a dark room and flashing a light or, or flashing a camera in your eyes for a minute. There's a dot there. But this is where the communication factor is going to be so big. These guys have to stay up with the racetrack now to understand what adjustments they need to make in the future. Fans want more TNT coverage? The Coca-Cola in-car camera on Race Buddy lets you ride shotgun with Coca-Cola racing family drivers. Check out the Coca-Cola in-car camera on NASCAR.com's Race Buddy now. And, and, you know, going back to what Kyle was talking about, you, you need to make big swings right now because the track is changing, like I said. Uh, it, it, it's one of those deals where you can't, if your car feels pretty good and you want to make a change, you almost have to go a little bit too far. You have to go further because the track is going to change so much. And McMurray here is making up some ground on the 48. We mentioned on that restart how aggressive he was on the back bumper. He was a half a second back, and now you see him closing once again. Two different lines for these drivers in three and four there, too. Yeah, two different lines. And, and you know, uh, you, you hear guys talk about it all the time. And, and, and the, the, the king and those guys, you said, you got to pass people where they ain't. You see the 48 move up in front of him right now because the 48's like, and his spotter's telling him, Jamie's running high. You might want to try that groove to see where he's at because he's closing on you. He's making some time. Where Jimmy has been predominantly from the middle of the racetrack to the bottom of the racetrack and made time on everybody he's raced against. Jamie's up there running a, just a touch lower, maybe a half a car lane lower than what the 56 car was running that first line, the, or the first run. This is the most laps Jimmy Johnson's led in his career to start a race. Impressive. He's led all of them so far tonight.